You know what it is. We are back debating our top 36 wide receiver rankings for week two of fantasy football. We did the same for the running backs. That already went live on the channel. Every Wednesday, we will be doing the same. So we'll be debating our top 36. We have our consensus. We have each of our rankings as well. And then at the end of the video, we will go through a deep cut wide receiver that we think you could start that is currently ranked outside of the top 40. And then we will do our favorite streaming tight end players of the week and defenses of the week. In the running back episode, we did our favorite streaming quarterbacks of the week. All right. So every Wednesday, just fucking tune in and subscribe to the channel because we've got tons of content coming for that ass. Style. Are you? You don't want to <laughs> All right. Um, and again, at any point, if you just want the rankings, which are updated in real time, basically, you can go to bdge.co and become a big dog member. Now, one thing that we're going to try to do a little bit more succinctly throughout these rankings videos, as we've heard y'all yap about, is a little less talk about the top ranked dudes and a little more talk about the, you know, low end ish wide receiver twos into flex plays, because that's really where you guys are making the decision. So we'll run through the top guys relatively quickly because I don't think there are uh, a ton of question marks up there or guys that like you're going to have sit start questions about consensus wise I'm just going to rip through our top 12 all right we have Tyree Kill, CeeDee Lamb, Cooper Cup, Amon Ra, AJ Brown, Justin Jefferson, Mike Evans, Jamar Chase, Garrett Wilson, Nico, Rashi Rice, Jalen Waddle all right anyone that you think that we need to speak of more succinctly in depth I mean there's no one in this lineup, in this top 12, that I think you're even debating not having in your lineup, correct? No, we got to spend more time with the bottom. we got to give them a no, little more, a little I, more QT. I will say... Andrew. Sorry, I just want to... gang? I just really want to say it. Like, I firmly believe, I think you both firmly believe, that as long as Puka Nakua is off the football field, Cooper Cup is locked and loaded top five option every single week. And, For I'm, not, sure. and I'm not even sure that when Puka Nakua comes back, that that's not the case too. Yeah, I mean, we you heard, like, Puka's on the IR, obviously. He will miss a guaranteed four weeks. But, again, yeah. the IR does not guarantee only four weeks. You could yeah. still miss time afterwards. And you said you heard a report. I've heard some rumblings that he could show up after the bye week, which I think they said their bye week is in week six. So that would be a week seven return for Puka. Correct. I would I would actually, based on the, the IR rules, venture to say that's what's most likely. Okay, so, yeah, if so you drafted Cooper Cup, then you are sitting fucking. It could be six weeks of cup. Alone. Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. 21 targets. I mean, in motion, every play career high, 14 catches. Like it's a thing of beauty. I will say like the Rams offense though. We didn't really talk about it in the running back rankings video. They lost a lot of firepower on that old line. The offensive yeah. line is they're in shambles. Horrific. They're in shambles right now. It is bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. Luckily they play against Arizona. Who's not really going to put pressure on right. Matt mm-hmm. Stafford, but just something to keep an eye on as it relates to probably the run game. Let's move down to our wide receiver twos, which this feels disrespectful. I was, I was going to say one more thing. Yes. You guys saw enough out of Rashi Rice that we feel like he's a wide receiver one now moving forward, right? For sure. And we talked about it a little bit on the last video. You right. were a little bit more down. and I was. And I, just, I, I didn't know what the role would look like. Apparently, the sure. role is really fucking good. Well, it's it's just the middle of the field. And that yeah. was like what they talked about a lot this offseason was like, Xavier Worthy's going to spread it, leaves the entire field. What if Rice takes over as the one over Kelsey? That happened. I, yes. Well, I also – I tried to take – if you look at my rankings, I tried to put him outside of wide receiver one. I could not do it. I do think that Travis Kelsey is not going to have most weeks performances like he did week one. Agreed. That said, Rashi Rice still, I think there's room in this offense for him still to eat while Travis Kelsey has a much better performance. This, yeah. it feels very similar to the progression that we've seen from Amon Ross St. Brown. Amon and Ra, it's the same I was going to say, it's, like so a, it's almost like a Cooper Cup light. Yeah. yeah. Where he's not, like, yep. going to be as explosive, but if you're just getting every single play thrown your way. I also think there's something to, like, Xavier Worthy had two big touchdowns that stall drives and, like, or not stall drives, but they end drives. Yes. For a guy like Rashi Rice, who was such a big red zone factor last year, he didn't score a touchdown, but, like, he's a PPR fucking goat right now. Go. And if those drives end up getting to inside the 20 or inside the 15 or inside the 10, there's a lot more touchdown upside left for the other Kansas City receivers. Well, yeah, those are the only two guys in the top 12 I even felt like we should talk about. Yeah, so we've got uh, back-to-back Niners receivers at 13-14, Debo and Brandon Ayuk. I mean, putting Debo as a wide receiver two right now almost feels disrespectful. I, I, I actually... Strongly debated put him ahead of Rashi Rice. I think they're it's almost interchangeable though. Super fair. There's just no world where I'm not putting <clears throat> Debo into my lineup. The only just... the only thing with San Francisco, which has always kind of been the issue with San Francisco, as long as Kittle, Ayuk, Debo are all healthy, they all kind of hurt each other's ceiling. Until, it's so inconsistent. Until last week, because why? 
If Christian McCaffrey misses time, everyone Debo is. Samuel yeah. also gets a ton of work. That's the other thing. Rushing. Debo without C Mac is is kind of goaded. Yes. Yeah. Uh Debo, like it's weird you say he's kind of inconsistent or you don't know how it's gonna happen, but it always just happens. Yeah. Like they get well, him involved. That's that's yeah, with CMC out of the lineup, that really does help Debo Samuel because he gets some of the value in the rushing game. But that I think said, he had like five or six carries. It's and he got the rushing touchdown. Right. So it's like when they're all on the football field, though, it can be pretty inconsistent. Okay, so things start to get interesting when we get probably past the 15 mark. So we've got Devontae Smith as our 15, Michael Pittman 16, and here's where the conversations start. For 17 to 24, we've yep. got Drake London, Chris Olave, Devontae Adams, Chris Godwin, Zay Flowers, Marvin Harrison Jr., DJ Moore, Malik. We've got some big disparities. There. I've got Chris Olave at 25. You both have him at 17. For me, this is a product of obviously what we saw last week and going against a very, very tough Dallas defense where it's like, sure, the Saints look good against Carolina. Carolina has no pass rush. They lose Brian Burns. One of the big concerns for New Orleans going into the year was their offensive line. It's going to be put to the test against Dallas and and Mike Parsons. And so I I think we could see an an absolute implosion game from the Saints offense in this one. And I just don't really want to attach my receiver position to that that type of game. I actually – I, I agree with all that you said there, but that's actually why I feel like Derek Carr just could do whatever he wanted to and they pass the ball to wherever. Shots. So now it's like, all right, when the offense is kind of with its back against the wall, what are they going to do? They're going to dial up Chris Olave. Yeah, my, I guess maybe my other concern too is like, I don't know, does does Chris Olave ever get the shots downfield? Like Rashid Shaheed connects on that big one. Is that yeah. ever going to be Olave? Yes, but I, I, I just feel dramatic. I, I, I think, know, but like, I think the reason you feel that way and it's not wrong is because there's a lot of over the top attention to Chris Olave. Yeah, sure. And that's where Rashid, yeah. Rashid Shaheed. No, no, no. I'm, what I'm saying though is it doesn't mean they're not going to take shots. It's yeah. just going to be shots to a two on one opportunity. I think part of the argument here for Olave as well is that you know we talk about game script. This is going to be a game script where they do have to pass the football a lot, especially in the second half as they're most likely trailing. Yeah. I don't know what the line is in Vegas, but. I'm assuming that they at have Dallas. I would say this has got to be a, at least a touchdown line, right? I would. That's what I would assume. And that being said, you know they're going to be trying to play keep up, and the best way to keep up in a game is to try and get your best playmaker the ball. Six and a half. Okay. <coughs> um, yep. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a little more out. Obviously, he's a lave. Like he'll he'll bounce back and have good games. I I'm I'm just you know ranking him a little bit lower. So we've got Devontae Adams, Chris Godwin had a great game. I will say, like all the talk about him playing more in the slot, the fact that Jalen McMillan has looked great all over the place is great for Chris Godwin because he yeah. did play more snaps in the slot than he did out wide and, yeah. and looked look, really good. Look at a, look at people coming around on Chris Godwin, man. Consensusly good, man. inside the top 20. Washington. So we've got to, you know, we've got to contain ourselves. But mm. obviously great to see in week one. We've got Zay Flowers. I've got him down at 26. You guys have him at 18 and 20. The uh, I would say Flowers, like, let's talk about, like, the Baltimore offense in general. Okay. Yes. Right. Huge favorites, nine and a half point favorites yes. against the Raiders. This could be like a, we don't need our offense for the fourth quarter. This could be Derrick Henry, 25 carries through three quarters. The other problem was against the Chiefs last week, their entire offense was just quick hitter. Like they took no shots really yeah. down the field because how quick they needed to get the ball out of Lamar Jackson. The A dot for Zay Flowers was horrible. I mean, it was so close to the line of scrimmage. And, and, and it's kind of always been like that for Zay, but. He's it, got a really nice PPR floor. But yes. if you're not in a full PPR league, I am a little nervous about what his ceiling could be in this game. I, I, I would say, though, I think last week, to, I think to your point, he's already been typically a low ADOT guy. However, last week it's like the concern for Lamar running so much, I think, is because why? what are you going to do? When you get in front of pressure, if you're Lamar Jackson, you go. You take off. Like Part of the quick – a-, a dot and quick hitters, I think, are like this dude got a lot of pressure. I'm not saying that guarantees the change, but Chris Jones is a fucking problem. Yeah, for sure. I think Zay Flowers. The reason I have him at 18 though is because I mean Chris Jones is a problem, but so is Max Crosby. <coughs> so Christian Wilkins. True. I'm not saying that. I, uh, not, you saw fair. the uh, Joe Alt delete now is kind of the nickname because he deleted uh, that's fire. Max Crosby off of he had zero pressures when they were one on one. Max really? Crosby and Joe Alt. No, I didn't see that. Yeah, because yeah, it's. No one saw him do anything last week. Joe he Alt Delete. You got Joe Alt Delete now. Alt Delete's such a good nickname. It's so cool. <laughs> Holy fuck. Okay. Keep Zay, moving down. Zay, I was just going to say, Zay had 10 targets, though. And I think yes. this is a guy that is – the touchdown upside for him is the only thing that I worry about. I think there's a lot better days ahead, though. Yeah, and, and maybe factoring in, like, is Isaiah likely, like, such a real target going forward, too? And he took a lot of, like, plays that felt like they maybe should have gone to Zay. A lot of quick outs, yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing. I think, actually, you know, that's the only thing that really scares me about my ranking of 20. And I'm not, like, super unconfident in it. But it is the fact that this game's game script could get out of hand. And then 
you know, you're looking at it where it's there is no need to pass safe flowers in football. Yeah, exactly. Marvin Harrison needs to be talked about because I, I'm not panicking. No, 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 definitely not panicking. Well, I don't think we should panic. But you have them at 22 overall. It. They got a much better matchup against the LA Rams at home in this one. Mm-hmm. So I would say, like watching the game, there's felt something a little bit off about the Arizona passing offense. A lot. Like, of it, it was not clicking at all. It didn't they're look still learning. I think. Yeah. They don't really. Keep in mind, Kyler didn't play that much last year in this offense in general. Yeah. And then you add in new weapons. Uh, you have the change with Rondell Moore no longer there. It's Greg Dortch now. It is going to be uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. there. Still a lot of learning to do. That being said, uh, Marvin but Harrison Jr. But, like, you Jr. drafted him at the one-two turn. You know, like, you need him to be there immediately. Right. I agree. I and think, I, I was going to say, the one thing they should have learned was on that day that we drafted Marv up there. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's... You got we drive Marv up there because they fucking did. They gotta yeah. use him. I'm just saying. Oh well, I, I get it. I'm saying that shouldn't be like news week one. Like yeah. he got was it three or four targets? I don't even know if he had that many. He had one catch. He I had know. three targets. It was one catch on three targets. Okay. Uh, that that being said, Nick, you know I had him high last week. I had big expectations for Marvin in week one. He didn't get that. Obviously, we've all seen kind of the highlight of. Marvin being missed on that last play of the game that would have actually kind of saved a fantasy football day. Yeah. Kyler got through the reads. It, it's not – it looks worse on the internet than it actually sure. was in real I don't, time. I, I don't like those. I, I think there's – those are, like, valid clips when the quarterback throws it to their guy and it, like, overthrows. And you're like, oh, he should have had that. But, like, you could look at every play and be like, that guy was open there. That guy yeah. was open there. Yeah. Like, I – well, and like I said, when you're looking at it in slow yeah. motion and he's going through a progression of reads, it's he's like rolling out. Yeah, whatever, it's, dude. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that being said, though, you got to keep in mind that this Rams secondary just let Jamison Williams run wild. They just let him run wild Facts. last week. So yeah. maybe, you know, we have a chance here where Marvin can bounce back. The only thing to that is like, and, I, and, and this could be a little bit of an overlook for me for Jamo looking into this year, is that they do have so many weapons that Jamo's going to have a lot of uh, – spotty coverage attention. Yes. Mar- Marv is – I don't care yeah. how many times they throw to Greg Dorch. Marv is not getting missed and no attention out there on the outside. Yeah, Marv – like, when you're a D coordinator, you're like, all right, game plan is to stop Michael Wilson and then Marvin Harrison. Dope. Greg awesome. Dorch and awesome. then Dope. Marvin Harrison. <laughs> nah, that, Please say the sense. junior. I would say, like, so you guys are super confident in having Marvin Harrison in your lineup, wide receiver two, no questions asked this week? I, I am because I, I think it's about two things. One serious, one kind of not, but kind of serious. He's going to have to put the sticks down this week. People forget that he's a gamer. I think mm-hmm. he's a little bit too worried about because he got his ass chewed out in film, I guarantee you. Mm-hmm. What are we not doing throwing the football to this guy? Thanks. There's no way that you're not putting an emphasis on, we are a football team that just drafted this guy this highly. He's this talented. Where is his opportunity? He's out there 90% of snaps. What's There's no way they don't make I – would, I would be shocked if they don't make an overcorrection there this week. What stat line would MHA have to have this week for you to be worried? Worried? Yeah. Less than five targets. Less than five targets. Definitely worried. Uh, That's the I, only one for me. If he goes like four for 60, we're worried. I'm not worried. No. Yeah, uh, I'm not worried if he goes four for 60. I'd say like two for 30. I'm like, okay, what the hell is going on? I, I don't care what the catches and yards are per se as much as I, I – he has got to be north of five targets. Okay. As long as he's getting the volume and they're, they're, they're putting the ball in his way, good things will happen at some point in fantasy. All right, let's if he's not getting targets, I am I am like, what the fuck are yeah, we I'm, doing? I'm comfortably throwing yeah. him in as my wide receiver, too. Okay. Um, I'm doing the same with the next two guys, DJ Moore and Malik Neighbors. So, DJ Moore, I have at 18. You guys have 25, 24. Uh, it seems like you said Roma Dunze is week to week, so he's going to miss this game for most likely. Right? I would, I'd be shocked if he plays. Okay. So, he's probably on the worst side of a 50 50 coin toss. Uh, Keenan Allen left last week with the heel. Doesn't seem to be. Should be fine. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be fine. He got a lot of targets on the, on the limited 11. sample of it. Um, but this makes it a more condensed target tree, and I'm not going to overcorrect DJ Moore compared to like where I thought he was going into the season. Obviously, a tough matchup at Houston. We'll see if Caleb can like pull together, watch some film, and like see what he did wrong, see what he did right. I'm just a uh, DJ Moore is still a guy that yeah, I like. This is this isn't a great defensive matchup. Actually, both weeks for Caleb Williams to start off, you get Tennessee and Houston. That's not great. Yeah, um, you can see a lot of Stingley, which could be a little problematic too. But it, it just I'm comfortable throwing DJ Moore in there. I'm still tempering my expectations early on in this year right now just because we do need to see kind of Caleb develop as much as he says he isn't rattled as much as he says he isn't nervous you know he he kind of looked like he was a little bit nervous last week and I think it showed also the game plan from Shane Waldron was just really wonky in general really like yeah when I I talked about like the 
the non motion, non play action for Rodgers. Yeah. They were also like bottom five. Like, I had Gerald that game Everett a lot. Was, it was bad. Yeah. Gerald Everett's out snapping Cole Komet. Like we talked about on the running back episode, you know, the kind of splits that were happening in that running back room. Very weird game plan. The one catch that Romo Dunes they did have was from a deflection and a batted ball that he ended up catching. Yeah. Yep. Bad. They bad got a lot of new plan. parts in Chicago. You know, like we've kind of said in a, in a bunch of videos, like, New offenses, new schemes, new coaches, new quarterbacks, those things take some time to mesh. You know, it's not going to all look perfect. It's not Madden. It doesn't look perfect in week one where it's just everything is plug yeah. and play. So keep keep playing those dudes. I would say with DJ Moore, like I have – my ranking is a reflective of I think this offense has a lot to work through. However, there's just no way to argue that I think it's a better situation for him volume-wise. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Malik, got to talk about this one. I got him. I'm the highest on him right now, 17. Adam, you're down at 30. Andrew at 23. My thing is, like, I saw uh, – Daniel Jones was as bad as you could be last week. I think the matchup against Washington, he'll it'll be a get-right game for Daniel Jones. I think he clearly knows that, like, if he's going to play well, it's going to have to go through Malik Neighbors. And listen, if you drafted for Malik sure. Neighbors, if you are <laughs> ever going to start his ass, it's, it's the matchups against Washington. I just think you have to have him in your lineup this week. All points that I had for myself as well, you know, this, like you said, this matchup, it's soft. Last week, he goes five for 66. Like, it wasn't a good game from the Giants, obviously, but Malik Neighbors still was actually pretty solid. That like, almost, uh, as weird as it sounds, that almost feels like his, his no, that, it's a that's, win. That's, like, that's it a, felt like a win for yeah. Malik Neighbors, and it was the Based only on how bright the passing spot played, yeah. out of this offense. So, I do expect, you know, one more step forward here in week two, and Malik Neighbors, I, I am comfortable throwing him in as my wide receiver two this week. For me, this is my assessment of Malik Neighbors. That that was like, he has that type of a really gross fantasy floor, I'll call it, right? Like, it doesn't necessarily feel good, but you're like, all right, he's going to give you Ten. on seven ca- on seven targets, five. That was better than a lot of receivers last week. Yeah. But I am strongly starting to wonder if that is not also his ceiling. Like, they the same picture, my boy. Like, it, we're, we're looking at – when is Daniel Jones going to throw a touchdown that's not to the defense well, again? Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> the, the Daniel Jones – Do you know that since signing 160, he's thrown more touchdowns to the defense than the offense? That is hard to – I'm not that's, that's the only thing that's worse than Deshaun Watson in I the NFL. I say – It's the only thing keeping you alive right now. This, this Daniel Jones thing. situation, it could get solved quickly. In week one, week one of the NFL season, Brian Dable is answering questions about whether or not Daniel Jones is going to be the starting quarterback next week. Well, that is the situation that we are in in New York. There was videos of fans waiting an hour for Daniel Jones to leave the locker room so they could boo his ass. Like You think they're going to cold cuts already? Bro, they are going to be coming for his head. I, if he goes three, three, four more weeks of this bullshit, they're yeah. pulling his ass out. No, that's, that's, I, I, that's I think I think, though, to me, the thing with the, the upside is basically, like if Malik Neighbors has that same stat line with a touchdown, people are going crazy about Malik Neighbors. For sure. But I just don't know. Real like no, I genuinely valid. don't know in my heart like if there's a touchdown coming. My I have I have the gut <laughs> I got the gut feeling you know there's not much into it other than just the gut feeling it's coming this week. I I, I kind of oh. agree too. Like Daniel Jones will have an okay week this week. Yeah, it's just because it's Washington. All right, let's keep moving down. We got DK at 25. Uh, he was completely erased by Pat Sertan. He's got another tough matchup where Christian Gonzalez is probably going to shadow him again. Yep. But I think uh, DK can get, play well against Gonzalez relative to Sertan. Get right game. Yeah. Diggs, we've got at 26. I have him a lot higher. Uh, I'm just kind of looking at the players that I have ranked underneath them, and I'm saying, hey, if it's in my lineup, I'm starting Diggs over Cooper. I'm starting Diggs over Tank Dell. He's playing more snaps. As we make our way down, we have Diggs, Cooper. What's your level of concern on Cooper? Has to be relatively concerned, right, after last week? <laughs> you, think, um, you think having a Tim Couch jersey on is going to change something? Johnny Menzel? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, listen, I think it's about as – concerning as you could it's about as concerning in week one start as it could be yeah. that said i mean people may not he dropped a touchdown yeah which doesn't you might not good to say that you no no but i'm touchdown. just saying i'm saying amari, if amari cooper doesn't drop that touchdown the narrative isn't quite as strong on deshaun watson and amari cooper looks fine in fantasy yeah, it's but i'm not i'm not i'm not arguing that nine. that was a good uh day for him but I think that's going to – when we look back, that's going to be one of his worst performances of the year. I, I kind of agree. I'm looking at Deshaun Watson a little bit like Daniel Jones. Like, I think we just know he's bad, but he'll play a lot better in matchups that aren't, like, elite defenses like Dallas, and obviously that will be better for Amari Cooper. One too. thing that's certain is, that is Watson is not the player he once was and never probably will be, but when you got 11 coming at you like that, it's going to be hard to get through progressions correctly. Yeah. Although – this Jags defense isn't bad. No, so they're not bad. They did a really Eric, good job playing defense Eric in Miami Armstead, last huh? week. Coming, they coming did a really good job him. except for letting up some huge plays. Tua did lead the, the NFL in passing yeah, yards. It was, it was more uh, second it half than it was. It was kind of like Dobbins 
great in rushing because of two big plays. Yeah. Same, same energy with Tua, yeah. for sure. I will say, though, too, uh, not to be understated, David Njoku, high ankle sprain. He's out. Correct. Didn't Jared Judy get a little banged up, too? Or am I making that up? That happens every week, it seems like. That's fair. I don't I don't know what his status is. But if he's out, like, I, I can't imagine Cooper doesn't get eight, ten targets. He's yeah, I mean, he saw nine last week with them on the field. So, right. uh, you know, it's – it's he's uh, going to get the targets. I'm worried about the quality of them. I'm worried about the offense in general. I, um, I was going to say, actually, that's a great – I'm glad you mentioned that. I almost forgot. Like, if we're – it's such a good segue. We talk about Malik Neighbors' floor. Like, Amari Cooper, I hate to tell you, is the same picture. The floor is as safe as his is, honestly. Nine uh, targets versus seven? They're this. Uh, yeah. You guys are saying, I know what you're saying, but you got to stop and think. He got nine targets in a re- with a really bad offense. It's the same fucking thing as what Malik Neighbors has. There's no difference. That's fair. Yeah. Thank you. It's just it the production fair. looked different last week. I'm finna, sure. they, but I'm they, finna bench his ass still. Well, I'm not I, playing Cooper <laughs> if I can. <laughs> all, all I'm telling you is, as a Browns fan, panic. Uh, look, <laughs> I'll there tell you, you what. I wrote in my notes, my notes literally says, this Browns team is bad, and they need to bounce back if I want to have any confidence in playing Amari Cooper. Yeah, so Amari's at 27. we got so Tank right in. behind him. So one thing to note is as much as everyone loves Tank, uh, he is the clear wide receiver three there. He's what only did, he's not playing when they're in two wide receiver sets. We kind of yeah. we kind of glazed or skimmed over um, Diggs. Want to just have the, let's just have a discussion. What's your of what's that. your oh, what's Diggs your Dell Diggs and Dell? Yeah, because right what's well, your Diggs Nico Nico's a clear one. Yeah. Sure. We, I think we kind of well, nailed Nico that. Nico should that. be just quickly stated as the one that you shouldn't worry about at all. Sure. Set it, forget it. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean Diggs. I think the easy narrative is like he scored the two touchdowns, didn't have a ton of yards, so it's like those might not go his way this time. Yeah. Maybe he's just like the end zone target. To me, one of the things I'm very interested on in general, unfortunately for him, is like what's happening with his upstairs because there's a lot of the, – the whole situation in Buffalo is extremely odd, right? He comes in this week. He's he's animated on the sideline already. He's Are they're, they're manu- into this bullshit? But they're manufacturing touches for him out of the backfield early, which is good. I, I'm just wondering genuinely if – there's trouble brewing if he doesn't have a two touchdown game. No, I don't think so. Not not, at not all. week one. I'm just saying down Look, the road. Is there's a point where they have he has a bad week and there's trouble brewing? I understand, and I know what you're talking about because there was there was clips surfacing around of of people that were already trying to paint the narrative of Diggs being animated on the sideline and whatever. I think Diggs is just a passionate football player. Sure. I think that's yeah. kind of how he communicates. It's not necessarily always going to be that negative like him pouting. People are going to look at it from the outside, and that's what they want to paint. That's what. It is. Yeah. I'm not worried about Diggs mentally in and any of that stuff. It's not playing a role into this at all. Now, obviously, the thing that I do uh, want to know, and I do think it should be stated, is the fact that he did only have 33 yards. The two touchdowns don't go his way. We're looking at this day a lot differently sure. than we look at it You know, when those touchdowns do go his way. I do think it's very important to also state that Tank Dell, as you mentioned, in that 12 personnel, he is not on the football field. He's not That's on the football correct. field at all. Yeah, and it's like clearly Houston wants to establish the fucking run, and they did it with Joe Mixon. So it's like if they're using 30 carries, all that kind of shit. Yeah. I'm not going to say I carries. said they was going to do that. Yeah, no, no, no. You hit that. You hit that. I did sure. hit that. <laughs> I, I'm not saying you should – I'm not saying because of all that you should not put Diggs in your lineup or fair, anything like fair. that. I'm just – it was a – it's something that I think is a little bit interesting to – keep my pulse on for the season. But with Stephon Diggs, I think that the t- you hit it on the head where the two touchdowns, I think, saved his fantasy output. And I, I think he has a, a much less safe floor than people probably realize at this yeah, point. Yeah, I agree. And I apologize because I let my love for Stephon Diggs come out there. Oh, no, I do you, love Stephon Diggs. He's like my top top three favorite wide receiver in the You have, to, you have nothing to apologize for. Is there, like, is there anything that's going to change, do you think, that where Tank <laughs> Dell starts playing more? No. Like, is there a path to him being the wide receiver two here? No. Damn. Yes. It, it probably would, probably if Diggs is hurt or gets himself in the doghouse. There, okay. There's just Outside no way. There's injury. no way. He's, there's no way he's moving Diggs off of uh, the wide receiver two. It doesn't feel like to me. Dell, you know, we still like him in dynasty, obviously, and things like that. But 2024, it's it's not going to be what you wanted if you have Tank. I, 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 still, I don't I don't necessarily agree with that because I think he's honestly going to be Jaden Reed still. I I kind of like that. Like he's still someone that. Even with, like, flop weeks, I still feel great about just having my wide receiver three or flex because, like, he's going to give you those five for 140 and touchdown weeks. I agree with that. He is, but I'm never comfortable throwing Dell in as a wide receiver two. That's, uh, but I think that's what I literally have him at 27, which is I, I think he's a high, he's a wide receiver three that has high upside. He's one of my favorite every single week flex plays, but I'd never want to play him as a wide receiver two. I, I also genuinely would have to have such a go to squad to sit tank, though. Yeah, that's the way I feel about Probably. it. Redraft, that's so hard to have at this point in the season right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's keep moving down. We got George Pickens, uh, 29. I have him 
pretty significantly lower than you guys simply because Sertan. Yeah, like Sertan, we just saw what he did to DK. And if you think like if you think Denver can zone in on a player like DK without having to worry about a defense, like literally, what is the pa- Pittsburgh offense? I will. Well, I, I, I do want to bring just a few points up about George Pickens because he is somebody that I actually am rising on quite rapidly. He's a great. He like, looks so good. I think he's a player that you should be trying to trade for. If he goes out and puts a stinker this week, like you should definitely be trying to get him. And the reason why I say that is because he accounted for over 50% of the passing production last week. He had a 30.4% target share. Absolutely the clear number one wide receiver in this yeah. offense. And that was a decent fantasy football day for him without an offensive touchdown from Pittsburgh. Without an offensive touchdown. I, I will say, though, he's like he's such a big play merchant that almost with digs, where it's like if he doesn't have those touchdowns or if like one of those two big plays just you know gets tipped by a defender, we're looking at a lot different game fair but don't you like it's the best of both worlds you're getting a guy who's working deep downfield and a 30 percent target no, no no i like i love george yeah. pickens going in he was like one of the the must draft guys in, in in our in our product and i'm in on him i just like this matchup in particular scares the fuck out of me I, for sure for i sure. would say um the matchup isn't great the the thing with george pickens that's to me why i have him at 26 and i would it's reflective of the matchup i honestly wanted to put him really high the number two offensive target in pittsburgh was who that's the best way to t- tell you the story that you're painting. Who? Yeah. Was who? In terms of just overall targets? Yeah. Was it? I mean, my mind would say Van Jeff, but the way that you phrase it makes it feel like it's probably. I know. I know. Frymuth had four targets. Calvin Austin. Okay. How did, many targets did he have? Uh, he had one catch. Uh, two. That was the number two? Frymuth had four targets. W- wide receivers. Oh, I thought you just <coughs> meant number two option in general. Man, I, sorry. If I, if I did not say the wide receiver part, that's what I was okay. meaning. Okay. To the point that I'm making is that. George Pickens, while being blanketed, is going to get contested catch opportunities. So I think he still will end up getting some of those. No, that's fair. And if it's Russell Wilson, I don't know that it will be. But I if, it, if I think it's Fields, is it, is it locked fields in Fields this week? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think they've already locked him. Okay, yeah. Russ, Russ, I think probably throws a better contested. Catch I ball. think it would be better <laughs> for Pickens if it's Russ. But long-term. regardless, I think that even with Fields in the lineup, he is going to be a guy that gets at least seven targets maybe Agreed. higher um and I, I think i think he'll end up getting some bringing some of those with it like i said down. i'm trying to trade for him where i can just because i think what i saw in week one was enough where i'm very <laughs> confident in their, him their playoff schedule is really really tough though so i would i would take a look at that before you send offers make sure you're not giving up too much for it Fair enough. it's it's really tough over the the stretch down there because that division it's like baltimore cleveland over and over again there's a guy yeah. that i really wanted to get to here terry mclaurin you got keenan next then we got terry at 31 yeah i mean the matchup, Yikes. dude, it's it's that system. Like, Jaden was great last week for fantasy because he got in twice by his legs. But this is the Cliff Kingsbury offensive system. Like, this is what I was so worried about. Like, th- that people think he's innovative because of that year he had with Kyler five years ago. Right. And then offenses, defenses figured him out in a second. You're talking about the, the big D-hop year as well? Yeah, like the horizontal raid shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I was super in on Terry preseason, and now I'm like, this looks so bad. Look, I, dude, I'm was- sorry, folks. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting for McLaurin to get the quarterback, and we thought Jaden Daniels might be that. But the system itself is going to be something that I just don't want. But yeah. what if? But what if? Uh-oh. No, I'm out. We I've got, already seen enough. But I'm what done. if we he got the best quarterback he's going to play for, and it's actually the worst outcome? Mm. What if the best quarterback for him fantasy-wise was actually Sam Howell? That's basically <laughs> what I'm saying. Is that The best quarterback he played with was somewhere in the past for his fantasy outlook. Yeah. But – Jaden Daniels, I don't. We, we have no idea if he's going to work out long term or not. But I, I don't. Right now, I, I struggle to find the upside in Terry McLaurin that's consistent enough that you actually want to play him in the Tank Dell type of mold. Of all so they're the not players, taking any shots downfield to him at all. Either. Like everything yeah. is so close to the <clears throat> line of scrimmage. It, it, based on last week, it was. I and now if that continues, we're really probably screwed. Yeah. And it was this actually be a telling game. It was kind of good for Brian Robinson. He was more involved in the passing game actually than I thought he was going to be. And Zach Ertz actually looked decent. Well, enough. who was the leading receiver for Washington? Uh, was it Eckler? It was Eckler, right? Eckler. Yeah. That's crazy, uh, man. That being said, though, of all of the players we've talked about today, even on the running back episode and in this episode, Terry McLaurin is the player I am the most panicked about. Uh, that's a. It should be you. Sh- if you are not, I feel like you are. You can't. Be reached, and I've almost got to the this week. Will <laughs> be reached, <laughs> like you said. This week is going to be very telling. Like I've, I'm, a, I would say I'm ninety percent of the way to the point already where I'm like I'm done with Terry McLaurin. I don't want him on my teams. What do you do? Like you can't. And like if he goes out and does this again this week, like I'm selling him everywhere. But you can't sell something that no one wants to buy. 
That's what there I'm saying. There might be people who still want to buy based on like name the value. The name value. But like, what, but if I can get if out. If he goes of, like five for 60 this week, oh, that's when you try I, to ship him? No, that's oh, a I'm good selling, point. Yeah, yeah, five if, for 60. If he has a good week this week, it well, could be a very good time to try to sell. How does he get the five for 60? Is it downfield targets and stuff like that? Or Don't is it matter. close to the line? in match. I'm still probably selling. I'm probably right, done. Let's let's keep moving. We got it. Yep. We got. We got Churn. It. Churn. Sorry. Burn. Scoop. Sorry. 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 Um. Next up, we got Xavier Worthy. I'm actually the highest on him. I just really Jesus. Lo- I like the matchup. Like, I mean, we just talked shit about Terry McLaurin, but you guys are starting Terry McLaurin over Xavier Worthy. <laughs> well, the only thing I'm concerned about with Worthy is right. that he had four opportunities. Three yeah. three targets in the receiving game and one rush. I, I think I think it's listen. I think Xavier Worthy is going to be fine. Fantasy. This is not reflective of his seasons. I just think that right now the volatility to me is going to be really real at this point i'm almost like i'll take four or five opportunities for zave over eight for terry also i don't think we know a hundred percent for certain but it sounds like hollywood brown will be in this game okay fair if if that comes in then i'll factor it a little bit it sounds like he's gonna be in this game that is part of my assessment as well and it's just that like i just don't know if to to me i i I think the upside's real, but if it if he only got three opportunities every week, that's really sad. I mean, four is though, but so is Terry's. Look, and like, who's going to get a shot downfield? Probably Zave over Terry at this point. Look, every time he touches the football, he has the chance to house that thing. So yeah. does Terry McLaurin, to be honest. Fair. So does Jameson Williams, who is our next wide receiver up here. Great first game. Uh, led the team in targets. Riser for me. Outrageous first game. For you. I mean, like the hype all offseason was that he's looked great in camp. Also something hard to buy because it feels like they talk about that every single year. Yeah. Came to fruition this time. They fucking yacked one deep right there. Dude, Goff was a good deep passer when he was in L.A. He hasn't had a single weapon that could actually stretch the field. Took one rip to Jameson Williams. Looked fucking vintage. You love to see it. I got clipped on a fantasy Q&A on Friday last week. Uh, somebody was asking me about Christian Kirk and Jamison Williams. And uh, Johnny Detroit, he watches the BDG videos. He's in, you know, my thing. He said something about Jamison Williams. And I, I said, you know, what if Jamison Williams is just a jag, man? What if he's a jag? And then he goes out and does this. So yeah. I got clipped for <laughs> I mean, sure. That's a tough one. So, like, yeah. week one, like, you don't know what you're going to get. But now that we know how involved he is and – playing against Tampa Bay, which is definitely a defense that you could actually throw the ball on. They're much better against the run than they are the pass. I think you can I think you can reasonably start him as a flex play this week. For sure. I agree. Um I, I agree. I think the one thing to me is that uh nine targets I think will be an outlier still for him. I agree. I, I think the game plan for LA was definitely like lock up the middle of the field. I'm on Ross and also what, one, Tampa's one thing, secondary is banged up right now. One, yeah. one thing that it, to me this, this Detroit offense with seeing that from Jamo in week one is got to be one of the scariest things for defenses to see, period. And I think that J-Mo's upside is still real, but I think we might have seen closer to his ceiling still. Well, if you ask it, Dan I'm, not, I'm not telling you you shouldn't play him, but like – game for me, though. Dan no, Campbell course. said – he was like, this isn't even close to the best of Jamison Williams. That is, and that's where I think Dan Campbell needs to be stopped because <laughs> we're just being crazy. <laughs> All right, so we've got the last four guys here. we got Jaden Reed is at 34, Christian Kirk is at 35, BTJ is 36, and Ladman McConkey is 37. Real quickly – Let's talk about the Green Bay wide receivers because we have Malik Willis mm. playing this week. Maybe they go out and get Tannehill, but probably Malik Willis for the next couple of weeks. That's kind of why I have him at 37. You got you have him at 29. You have him at 35. Jaden Reed is definitely my favorite <coughs> Green Bay receiver, but like Malik Willis has shown us nothing in the passing game to, to make me feel like he's going to throw for more than 140 yards. Honestly, I, I'm kind of almost avoiding most Green Bay Packers options yeah. if I can. Like I'm even a little bit worried – Jacobs, they're going to lean on Josh Jacobs, but, you know, this whole offense as a whole, would you be surprised if they go out there and score, like, seven or less points? No, that's I, why he's 30. I, I would not. I will also say, I think in football, more so than almost any sport, and probably any sport, coaching is paramount. And I think that the Vrabel, like, Vrabel in the situation with Malik Willis, I'm not telling you Malik Willis is a great player, but is about as bad as it could be for him. I think that LaFleur is going to find a way to be – Better with him, using him in a way that's hiding his flaws and helping to push his attributes, which are not many to push. I think that one of the things that he would push, though, is quickly get the ball out to Jaden Reed. Yeah. Sure. Well, and Jaden Reed has been used a little bit in, you know, running game and things like that as well. For sure. So Jaden Reed, yeah, I feel comfortable about Jaden Reed's, like, super talented. He's uh, talented enough to probably overcome the uh, offensive of, situation. Of the, cor- of the receiving options that I feel safest about, given the change of quarterback is if with Malik Willis, it's going to be Jaden Reed. Quicker, yeah. get the ball in his hands as much as possible. Manufacture touches to him. Christian Watson, not the one that I like. I about. think, and no, say, not Honestly, at all. same with Romeo. 
I think yeah, one I mean, because those are downfield guys. Correct. And like, I got no faith that Malik's going to push the ball down. For sure. Well. And, and Christian Watson, a lot of his value comes actually in the red zone, which we don't expect <laughs> him to be in that often. Facts. And I will say as well, Malik Willis, it's also worth noting that he was added very late in the preseason to this team. Right. And so, like, he didn't even get a full offseason program with this yeah. offense. Yeah, I mean, this could be one of those games where it's <laughs> just like Josh Jacobs gets – is getting touches in the third and fourth quarter, high volume, even when they're losing type yep. of thing, just so they don't get, like, completely buried. Well, because I, well, I think I think if you're planning for Green Bay right now, everything we're saying is not anything that the other side of the ball is not knowing. Right. These bo- these fucking boxes are about to be so stacked that I think you can get Jaden Reed. Look at last week. Now, granted, it's not going to be as open, but Jaden Reed ran wild. Like, you give him, let's say, six, seven touches, even though more manufactured, he could end up breaking one of those long. Here, here's the th- If Jaden Reed produces in this week, he, like – Pretty much vaults up to must start type of player going forward. If Jaden sure. Reed has a has a above average week this week, it, you can't buy him. And he's Dynasty. just he's just like he was yeah. the wide receiver one last week. Yeah, I mean he's oh. fucking goaded. All right, so those are our top thirty six. Again, if you want updated rankings at all times, oops, you can go do so. Uh, I like Brian Thomas Jr. That's by signing up on BDGE dot co for the Big Dog membership. Let's get into our deep cuts at the wide <laughs> receiver position. I will start off with Tyler Lockett. He's the wide receiver uh, 51, and I don't think the matchup will be too dissimilar. He obviously led the team in receiving yards and receptions and targets last week, mainly because Patrick Sertan locked up DK Metcalf, and I do think the Patriots are going to have a similar defensive plan with Christian Gonzalez on DK Metcalf, which, again, will allow Tyler Lockett to uh, probably stay open for the majority of the game. So I like I like Lockett again. I think you can get him in as your wide receiver three flex play. Yeah, to me, Brandon Cooks, a guy I've been preaching all offseason, actually – of so- someone that did perform in that offense that didn't need to mm-hmm. versus Cleveland last week. I think he's pretty easily a guy that is going to continue to be discounted and you can slide into your flex spot confidently until Dallas has one of these weeks where they just go offense crazy. For me, it's going to be a guy you can you can pick right up off the waiver wire and plug him right into your flex. It's Demarcus Robinson for the Rams. Mm. Uh, they play against the Arizona Cardinals. He's the wide receiver 56 in ECR right now. Last year, uh, he had a couple – 15-point performances, about five of them actually down the stretch. Uh, He is going to be the immediate number two. If you ask Sean McVay already, he said, we currently have Cooper Cup, Demarcus Robinson, and then three guys in Tutu Atwell, Tyler Johnson, and uh, somebody else. I can't. Feels like it'll probably be Tyler Johnson as the three there. That are going to fight for that three spot. But he firmly said it was Demarcus Robinson as the number two uh, moving forward while Puka is out. I think, you know, you pick him up, you're going to get to play him here this week. You could probably play him for two, three, four weeks as well. I agree. If you if you drafted Demarcus Robinson, th- there's no better op- outcome than what you have right now. You have to play him. If, yeah. if you don't play Demarcus that Robinson now, when the hell are you going? It was to? like one of these guys is going to get hurt. D. Rob steps in as a two. This is when you very play him. popular best ball pick in the late rounds just because of this situation. Exactly. For and sure. moving into our streaming tight end uh, starts of the week. I will double down on that offense to double down the same player. Colby Parkinson was my guy last week. I'm going to go Colby Parkinson again. Just listen, like when Puka is out of the lineup, that opens up like 10, 12 targets per game in this offense. Um, he ran 82% of the routes last week. He actually ran the single most routes at the tight end position in the NFL last week because they went into overtime, obviously. He went 4 for 47, which is like decent for streaming. And dis- disgustingly enough for last week, that was a tight end seven in fantasy. So they play the Cardinals this week. Good matchup, a lot of routes. Like, you could definitely do work worse than Colby. Yeah, I, I think, too, you, I, I was going to cue him up as mine, and I'm like, ah, why talk about the same person? But Tyler Higby, McVay just is a guy that in that offense is going to use the tight end. Mm-hmm. To me, it's Theo Johnson. Like, Theo Johnson was now someone I expected to see. You probably didn't love what you saw out of him in week one, but if you watch the game, the offense is really gross. Yeah. Daniel Jones, terrible, but – Theo Johnson played one of the highest percentage of snaps of all tight ends last week. Which did he ca- what did he do? Uh, right? I think he had four catches. Well, four balls. It's like tight end or eight. Maybe four targets. So that's tight end eight? Pretty much. But, I mean, I, I just think that Daniel Jones is a guy that's going to throw the ball to whoever he can that's closer to the line of scrimmage. I think Theo Johnson, with even limited volume, is an athlete enough to do something with it. So it's a, it's a long shot play. But if you have nothing at tight end and you didn't get likely – I think you can basically go get him on most leagues yeah. I mean, and play him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Colby Parkinson was a guy that I wanted as well. I think he's just very obvious. I do uh, – I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Zach Ertz, you know, you can pick him up and maybe play him. He's the wide – or the tight end 20 
in this uh, ECR this week. Now, that being said, last week he caught three passes. He had four targets. He went for 28 yards. I think the thing that you're buying into with Zach Ertz, if you're picking up to stream him, is he did play on 70% of the snaps. He was second uh, in routes ran on that offense. So they are using him. He has history with Cliff Kingsbury, and we talked about them you know, using shorter routes, closer to the line of scrimmage. It's maybe more of a PPR play if he does get a little bit more involved. But Zach Ertz, maybe a deep play at tight end. I'll give you one more alternative here, too, staying in the NFC East uh, with Jake Ferguson out. Luke Schoonmaker will be their starting tight end, and Dallas always passes the ball a shit ton to the tight end. So if you're really desperate, I actually think he can catch like four or five passes this week and just be like a decent option to throw in. Schoonmaker was another one I was considering talking about. Schoonstein, that's where I actually thought you were uh, going originally. But I think all three of these, four of these guys are relatively, uh, you know, usable in your lineups. Let's wrap up the video. And again, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing these every single Wednesday, both wide receiver and running back. If you didn't watch the running back one, we will link that first down below in the noters. Streaming defenses. I've got the Chargers. Uh, they were six and a half point favorites against Carolina. Carolina obviously looked abysmal. On the flip side, the Chargers defense looked really good under Harbaugh. Uh, four sacks, six quarterback hits. Just feel like it's going to be another long day for Bryce. Just another long year for Bryce. So, Chargers are my stream of the week. Listen, I got to get the Browns on here somewhere. and we So, we're going to take them Duval. I mean, okay. <laughs> it's not hard to see if you watch the game or in any capacity why you might want to fade the Browns offense. Mm-hmm. And – they paid Eric Armstead, who got after the quarterback, and I think there's turnovers to be had, there's sacks to be had. Saxonville might be bike. I mean, Deshaun Watson be doing that to teams. Hey, Help, he might be helping that out. Mm-hmm. Look, this one's going to be fairly obvious, but I'm going Indianapolis against the Green Bay Packers. We talked about Malik Willis. That screams turnovers, <clears throat> mistakes, low scoring from Green Bay. The Indianapolis Colts defense is pretty solid. They should have a good day against the Packers. There you have it. All right, wide receiver rankings, the Bates, if you want our rankings, again, 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 bdge.co. Sign up to be a big dog member, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for our trade video. Love you. We out. Smoochies. Trade them.